So, hello everybody. I thought I'd do an update. It's been a couple of months since I made those last videos. I know I just uploaded them. They were sitting in my phone for a while and I just never got around to uploading them. So I finally did and now I'm uh, going to do an update on my hydro pack setup and then I'll do a separate video on uh, I'm pulling some different trailers. I'm pulling a, uh, it's a MC331. It's a propane trailer now. So I'll kind of go over some of the features of that trailer and uh, some features of the new, new uh, hydro pack setup I got. So let's uh, we'll take a look at that. December I switched companies and um, with this new company I'm, I'm pulling, I do a lot, of, uh, a lot of propane trailers. So I had to go to a hydro pack in order to run the pump on the trailer. So I um, actually got referred to a place down in Indiana, southern Indiana, great guys. Uh, I think they're called... Um, uh, pneumatic something or other um, I don't know they were really compared to the cost around Chicago they were three three or four thousand dollars cheaper and did a great job and had me in and out in about two days so um, they're a Gardner Denver dealer so I went with the Gardner Denver hydro pack um, ended up doing a new PTO and all the hydraulic lines um, I ended up keeping my com my same Quincy compressor um, but we did a little they did a lot of modifications so it's actually still the same compressor uh, but what they did was they um, I don't know if you can see it but they kind of mounted up a, um, a hydraulic shaft set and then mounted it to the to the mounting frame so I actually could keep the same compressor but you know wouldn't have to buy a whole new compressor but we just had to buy a hydraulic fitting to um, to adjust it so um, with the hydro pack now, uh, you got my controls. Now, my setup was a little more expensive than what normally would be in a hydro pack because of the way I do think, you know, because of the trailers I unload. But some of the products we unload, we were had we had the count that the product was really really thick, so I needed the ability to run both the product pump and the compressor at the same time. So with this setup. I can actually do that. I can actually turn the pump on. I can actually run the compressor. Um, I have the truck turned off, obviously. I can run the compressor and run the product pump at the same time. So it, um, when you got some really, really, really thick, heavy uh, product like glue um, or some heavy vinyls, um, or you need the, it's just so thick the pump can't pull it all, so you need to put air behind it. So. Um, actually, my setup, the way it is, I can add two more controls to it, so if I wanted to add another separate pump, I could. If you look at the top, I marked this. The reason why it says trailer and this is compressor is what, what, I ha what we ended up doing was I bought this separate valve. This valve is not cheap. Let me just tell you, I about had a heart attack when they told me the price of it. But what this valve allows me to do is, there used to be a knob, the knob fell off, I don't know why. Um, so if I have it pushed one way, the way it is now, it'll then run to my hydraulic fittings so I can run the trailer. Um, if I push the knob the other way, it'll then run hydraulic down to the air compressor. So that's what the uh, compressor slash trailer, that's the direction of what the knob is. So. Um, also had hydraulic fittings put on um, for uh, running the hydraulic to the trailer. Now the Gardner Denver only holds about I think it's five or six gallons of hydraulic fluid, so it's not enough to do dump work or walking floors or anything like that. I need I would need a bigger hydraulic tank, but for what I do, it's it's more than enough. Um, so. Yeah, so that's kind of the setup. I also had in transit heat hook um, added to it. Um, you can actually see they're actually running off. I don't know if I can get a picture of that. If you look right there, they're actually running off the bunk heat. Um, so the the uh, coolant lines running down back to the bunk to run the bunk heater. That's actually where we hooked up to. Um, I know some guys will hook their setup right off the engine block. But we didn't want to run that much line, so and this was, you know, already run back here. So they just added some T connectors, and um, I've got some quick connects with valves in the back. So right now it's shut off. So if I need to run a load that's got in transit heat, I can just open the valves. I've got some quick connects. 
I'll hang them from the hose rack and just hook them to the trailer and I'm good to go. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's about it. It's, uh, that's kind of new. Oh, I was going to say, I bought a new, actually a new pump. Well, there's nothing really wrong with my old pump, but it wasn't a hydraulic pump. It was a shaft pump, uh, or shaft driven, I should say. So, it was only about 200 bucks more for me to actually buy a whole new roper pump than it was to actually do a whole retrofit. So I saved some money because I just bought the pump itself. I already had the tubes. So what we did was we just took the tubes off of the other pump and um, mounted them on this one because it's exactly the same. This pump is a little higher quality. Um, instead of having uh, Teflon packing um, and a, just a stain a steel shaft, this one has a brass um, bearings actually the bearings are, are a little higher quality they have brass bearings um, and a different packing and also a stainless steel shaft so it's a little more expensive but uh, with this setup I'm told I can run caustic um, so my company who I work for we really don't do caustic but it just it seemed like a no-brainer to spend a couple hundred bucks more and get a um, little more robust pump without breaking the bank so that's uh, that's the new setup, and uh, I'll do another video on the MC331 propane tanks. Thanks.